Hi, everybody. So we just got finished um, reading War of the Wall, which is a great story about making first impressions. And, you know, when I think about that story, I think about um, when we first meet people and we see them doing something, and especially if they're in our space or and we see um, others as outsiders and um, and we tend to first wonder why they're coming into our space instead of uh, engaging them in conversation to find out what has brought them to our town, just how we approach people. Um, and so this is a great example of um, what happens when you when you just sort of um, continue to observe someone and it's difficult to engage in, a, in an authentic conversation about what's happening and why. Um, so there's some first impressions, but there's also some assumptions in that story. So I really like to just read stories and talk about stories and talk about how stories speak to me and help me understand how I may have judged other people um, too quickly in the past or how they have judged me. And I like stories to reflect my life. And um, I like to just read a story. And I, talk, I typically do not write essays about the stories that I read when I'm reading for fun. But when we're in school, sometimes we have to do that. So, um, so we're gonna take a look at an analytic essay today. And so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And this is the analytic essay for um, War of the Wall. And so it's an analytic essay prompt. And so when I think analytic essay, I think analytic is analyzing a text that I read for school. So it follows a specific genre of school writing. So it's not necessarily the type of writing that I would see in a magazine or on Facebook or on Instagram. It's certainly not something I would read to TikTok, though that might be kind of interesting. Um, it's a specific type of writing that follows a very specific expectation. And so one of the things that's important just to know is like, this is the genre of writing and this is what's expected. So here's the prompt. In the War of the Wall, the narrator of the story tells us that he and his cousin Lou react strongly to a newcomer to their neighborhood. Yes. Write an essay in which you analyze the influence of first impressions on the interactions between the boys and the painter lady. So I know it's an essay. And when I see the word essay, I know there's a beginning, middle, and end. So I'm going to my notebook. And I'm gonna just put today's date. Okay, and so here I am. So what I like to do first, and I'm just gonna do this because this is how I like to think. I'm a, I'm a table kind of person, so I'm gonna do insert table. And I know there's three parts to it. So beginning, or intro, body, conclusion. So I know that, okay. Oops, what happened to my prompt? Okay, so the next thing I know I'm gonna essay and it's about the influence of first impressions and the interactions. Okay, so there's my goal. I'm gonna copy it and put that, that's my introduction. That's the goal. Okay, describe the first impressions the two boys form of the stranger. So that's the first thing. It's gonna be in the body. Consider what events and circumstances have influenced Be sure to explore how their feelings about the wall and oh how their feelings about the wall and what it represents influences their reactions. So I'm going to explore that. and discuss how the characters, okay, I'm gonna do that too. Okay, so the body has all of those things. 
Um, how and why does the boy's impressions of the painter lady change by the end of the story? Explain what the wall now represents and how it influences. Okay, so I feel like that would be a good conclusion. So this is how I'm gonna kind of get into it. Okay, all right. So these are all the things that I need to do in my analytic essay is to, and, and it's kind of interesting because the prompt is really doing all the work for me, just, you know, so they're really just checking more than anything, whoever wrote this, it sounds like it's the teacher or the school, is more than anything just checking if I understood the story, if I understood the story. So that's kind of the key. Okay, so I know that um, the beginning, the introduction is I have to like name the title and the author and what's going on. So I'm just gonna get right into it. So in the short story, so I'm gonna talk about the genre. So my intro, I'm gonna talk about the genre, title, author, um, main idea or theme. So that's my introduction. In the short story, I'm gonna put it in quotes because it's a short story, not a book or movie, which would be in italics. War of the Wall by Tony, okay, I don't remember, Tony Cade Bambara. Comma. Um, going back to the prompt. The narrator and his cousin Lou react strong. Oh, there's right there. That's the kind of the theme. Make a strong first impression of the painter lady who has come to their community for reasons boys did not know nor care about. <laughs> okay, so that's like a little bit of it. Um, but I also want to say um, something about, hmm, I want to say something about how that strong Im impression influenced the interactions, right? Um, this strong first impression influenced their interactions with the painter in a negative way, which set in motion a potentially harmful event of, well, I'll just say that for now. Okay, I'm just thinking about that. Okay, so now, because remember they almost spray painted over the whole thing, like that was one of the things. Okay, so now describe the first impression the two boys form of the stranger. So I'm gonna go back to the text. What was the first impression? Okay, so the first impression is kind of right here. It was our wall and she had no right <clears throat> coming into our neighborhood painting on it. So that's like their first impression. Okay. Okay, so I'm describing it, right? The first, okay. The first impression, the two boys, of the painter lady. is captured in this line. I'm gonna put, so that's kind of like, I'm introducing the quote. <clears throat> now I'm gonna put the quote in.
Okay. And now I'm going to explain the quote. The key words in this quote, or the key word in this quote is our. The narrator says, our wall and our neighborhood. It is a sense of ownership and belonging. And they see the painter lady as not part of it. Okay, so that's their first impression um, of the painter lady is by this, like they immediately see her as an outsider, but then there's something else that happens. Oops. This part here where they start kind of talking and the painter lady paid us no mind. She just snapped the brim of her straw hat down and hauled the bucket. So the painter lady doesn't seem to be wanting to communicate with them. So that's another impression that they have. And then I can say, in addition, when the boys or when the boys um, talk and seem to be inviting the painter lady into dialogue, albeit not very welcoming, they notice her response which furthers this impression. And I'm gonna put another quote here. But the painter lady paid us no mind, she just snapped the brim of her hat. So now I'm gonna explain this, right? It's the gesture, the gesture of snap is a negative connotation and hauled. is a strong word that shows her maybe as aggressive in the eyes of the boys who are forming their opinion, right? Okay, so that's something else that's happening there. All right, so that's pretty good on that first describing, right? And now consider what events and circumstances. So I think I'm already kind of doing some considering um, that influence the characters, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna expand on it another, just to make sure I address this. Um, an event that further influenced the characters to form this opinion is when Side Pocket brought the lady some food, but she, and I'm gonna put another quote, didn't even say hello to anybody. Wait, does that make sense? I'm gonna go up here. Um, please go and stop. And this part here, oh, the painter lady was giving us a show. Oh, this was it, okay. Maybe that's a better quote. Let me look at that quote. But she was too focused on her painting And I think, wait, so I'm gonna put that in here. Seemed that the boys thought this was a performance 
that they were using, she was using their wall for a performance rather than the games they used to play on the wall. Because I think they played handball or something like that. Okay, so what's next? So I did this, I'm gonna delete it, tackle that one. Explore how their feelings about the wall, about how their feelings about the wall and what it represents symbolically influences the reaction. Okay, so I have to find some examples of their feelings about the wall and what it represents symbolically. So I'm gonna go back to the story. Okay, and so this part is asking what the wall means symbolically. So other than a wall, what might it stand for? And so I think about symbolism and like I think um, you know, a pen, the symbolism of a pen is like the power to the right or freedom to, to think or something like more symbolic of that. Or a flower might be symbolic of change or growing up or how things change or winter might be symbolic of, of um, not changing or things being stagnant or a storm might be symbolic of um, bad things that are going to happen or something along those lines. So here I have to think about what is the wall symbolic of? So um, we've been pitching pennies against that wall since we were kids. Old folks have been dragging their chairs out to sit in the shade of the wall for years. Big kids have been playing handball against the wall. Um, so since so-called integration when the crazies cross town poured cement in our pool, so we couldn't use it. I'd sprained my neck boosting my cousin Lou up to chisel Jimmy Lyon's name into the wall when we found out he was never coming home from the war in Vietnam to take us fishing. So I think these are some really important things about how this wall is kind of like a member of the community. It's almost like a person, right? So because they feel like it's a person that they're painting on, that's kind of how I see the wall. So I'm going to say um, the boys and the community have a strong feeling. is a community member, a person, yeah. Um, here we see the way the community visited and used the wall. And then that's my introducing the quote. This is kind of a lot of quote. I don't think I'm going to use the whole thing because you don't want to have too much. You want to balance it. Okay, so the boys in the community have strong feelings about the wall. Most like it's, okay. Um, here. The kids have been playing handball against the wall since so-called integration. When the crazies across town poured cement. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. Here we see that it is that the wall is symbolic of time and and longing in a time when they experienced injustice. In addition, a wall symbolizes loss. For example, in this quote, We see a wall documenting, like a grave almost, right? Loss of a community member. Okay, so I've explained all that, but now I have to do the react, how that connects to the reaction to the painter lady. Therefore, the wall, 
the poor painter lady painting over the ball marks. in the name of its fallen member, fallen community member. Is like an assault on their community. So they rightly want to protect it and object to its being painted by an outsider. I don't think that they would feel as upset if it were someone that they knew and cared about. Okay, so I've explored. Discuss how the characters interact with the newcomer as a result of how they see her. Okay, so there has to be more, like how are they, uh, what are some of the interactions? So I've said a little bit already. Um, I think there's been a couple quotes in there about how they react to her, um, how they interact with her. Let me see if there's anything else here. Okay, so well, I think one of the most important examples of how they result at react with her, and so discuss this. So discussing is sort of like, it, I guess, kind of like explaining, explaining, but. Um, so I'm just gonna say in general, or like most of the interactions with the newcomer were tense and negative as they questioned her intentions about uh, painting and also why she did not accept the supper um, side packet brought. I think that's right. They questioned her eating habits too. Um, but they also began to scheme about removing her <laughs> from the neighborhood as evidenced by that quote in here. Um, so, be, it's so this is kind of repetitive, so I don't want to say scheme, but they also um, Tried to find to find a way to get her to leave. Um, so this what's evidence here is clearly the boys were <laughs> rather obsessed with taking back their wall or as the title indicates, um, starting a war or finishing <laughs> the war. Um, they plan to spray paint it, spray paint over it. Okay, so that's that. Okay, how am I? does the boy's impression change by the end of the story? Okay, so that's, this is an important. So in conclusion, um, okay, so let's see here. So in this last part, we wanna look at the ending. So mama tapped us on the shoulder and pointed to a high section. Lou hunched me because the kid looked like me. Okay, so this ending is really important, right? Because 
Um, what we find out is that the woman was painting, um, painting the community and to the people of Talia Farrow Street um, who, uh, who were the family and the friends of um, her cousin, Jimmy Lyons. So that's a pretty important thing. Um, and this kind of discovery here at the end. And the more that I looked, so I'm gonna copy that here. Okay. So I'm gonna start moving toward how and why the boy's impression of the painter lady changed by the end of the story. Um, I'm wondering if this should be in the conclusion or if it needs to be in the body, but I feel like I can make it work in both ways. So I wanna say, Tony Cade, Barbara wrote the short story to offer her readers perspective of, oh, to offer her readers a lesson or a way of thinking about how we make our first impressions, why we make them, and what might happen if we allow people to surprise us. By the end of the story, the boys who wanted nothing more and the painter lady to go away, realize that she was there to honor their community by putting a community on the wall. Even the narrator. Narrator, narrator notices the faces of his of Talia Farrow Street on the wall that started the war. <laughs> Okay, here we are. <clears throat> the narrator sees that the woman, that the, the narrator realizes that the painter lady understands what this wall symbolizes, which is injustice that has been experienced and overcome. Maybe not overcome, maybe that's not it, which is Um, the narrator, the painter lady understands that this, what this wall symbolizes, which is a member of the community that has witnessed injustice, celebration, and death of Jim Lyons. Therefore, this wall, so I'm like looking at this last part, how do I wrap it up? This wall represents a 
something even more than it did at the beginning. Recognition and gratitude for the people. Pharaoh. Is that right? Pallia Pharaoh Street. The wall of respect. There we go. Okay. Okay. So here we see we have our beginning introducing the genre, title, author, idea and theme, right? And so what do you notice that I do in the second part is the second part is lots of quotes and explaining the quotes. That is what analysis is. <laughs> um, analysis is when you take something and you find the parts and the words and the phrases and really make sense of it. Um, and I'm using the language from the prompt to kind of divide it up. And in the conclusion, I'm returning to the author, the title, um, I should say that, short story. Um, the title, the author, the genre, the theme, um, and explaining the impact, um, or whatever it is in the um, in the prompt, right? So I'm trying to pull it all out in the prompt. So there I've kind of taken you through my analytic essay and my thinking about how I unpack it and move all the way through. Okay, so I hope that that was helpful to hear me thinking and writing at the same time. <laughs>